All right. Welcome to MMA Al Dente, guys. I am the guy that called Alexa Grasso's first submission. And I called Nunez versus Pena. So, listen to me if you want to win the big bucks. As I sit here in my fucking 93 Toyota Camry. All right, guys. I'm here to talk to you about UFC 273. I'm going to give you my predictions and bets. How this is going to work. I'm going to start at the top with Volkanovski versus Zombie. Just give you my prediction. A little insight on the fight. And the bets at the end of each fight. But then at the very end of the video, there will be all of my bets recapped. Uh, you know, my, whatever, my, uh, yeah, my bets recapped at the end. So if you're just looking to see who I want to bet on, skip to the end of the video. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that douchebag shit. Because that really would help. You want to make my day, fucking subscribe. All right. Who wants to make my day? I have no idea. Volkanovski versus Zombie. I'm going to start right at the top here. Oh, yeah, and this is UFC 273 in fucking Florida. Anaheim, California, whatever the fuck. Who cares? Volkanovski versus Zombie. I've got Volkanovski winning via unanimous decision. That's uh, my prediction. My bet, the only bet I'll play on this is Korean Zombie winning plus 900 to win by, via, via knockout. I think that's pretty much his only way of winning. I'd be surprised if he outpointed Volkanovski. Volkanovski I've seen get outpointed. I mean, seen outpoint on the feet. Max Holloway on one and a half occasions. Chad Mendez till he finished him. And fucking Jose Aldo and whoever the fuck else. This guy is just too good. I'm not going to bet against him. And, well, I am going to bet against him. But I'm not going to pick against him. I'm never going to pick against that guy who showed me what... You know, he was made of in uh, round three against Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega, if you would ask me, looking at Volkanovski, to put him in one position that would test his medal as a fighter, his championship medal, I would say, how about a guillotine choke after he was knocked down by Brian Ortega in round three, which is Brian Ortega's round. And... He passed that test. He was put in that position. He passed that test with flying colors. I don't think he won the round, but it wouldn't surprise me. I'd have to rewatch it. He beat the fuck out of Ortega after he got out of that guillotine. And then he got caught in a triangle in the next one or a Darce or whatever the fuck. But he, uh, you know, his submission defense is top notch. He's never been tapped. If that was a hole in his game, with even just the slightest hole in that ship of his, to use this whole fucking hole metaphor. Let me get rid of that notification on my phone. If there, you know, if there was even a slight hole in his game, he would have been finished in that Ortega fight. All right? But he wasn't. So, Zombie with his Dars and whatever and blah, blah, blah. I just, I don't see it happening. I see the only way Korean Zombie wins this fight being a knockout. And specifically an uppercut knockout. Just like he did with Dennis Bermudez and whoever the fuck else. And this is pretty much exactly how I felt when I predicted uh, Volkanovski versus, versus Ortega. I said, you know, I think Ortega, of course, Ortega can submit anybody. I guess that was a part of it, too. Uh, but uh, really, I thought if he wins a fight, it's via knockout, via uppercut, uppercut. And I don't see that happening. So Volkanovski's my pick, my bet. Korean Zombie KO plus 900. Can't even predict the round, whether it would come earlier or later. I guess earlier, but uh, it's not worth picking a round. It's probably not even worth betting on it. But uh, I'm going to sprinkle something on that. Next fight, Aljo versus Pyotr Jan 2. All right. I'm picking Pyotr Jan. I like Pyotr Jan to win the fight. I saw what you guys saw in the first fight. And, of course, we know we're going to see a totally different fight. If nothing else, I expect Aljamain Sterling to approach the fight differently, radically differently. I think everybody saw the same thing, which is this guy poured everything he had into that first round and... There was really, there wasn't much left. There was a little left. Look, the second round was very close. But it was just a guy, you know, I made this comment on the internet, I think on the YouTube uh, video of their first fight, that Pyotr Jan started at intensity level 8. And he could fight that way for 5 rounds. Aljamain Sterling started at 10, fell to 8, then 6, then 4, then 3, then fuck. Ah, my head! And he fucking, he ended up winning the title. But still... Uh, Pyotr Jan, that's how he is in every fight. You know, the Sanhagen fight, of course, it was a lot different, but it wasn't much different 
generally speaking. Your your best yawn, uh, best round against Jan is going to be round one. And his best round against you, if you're lucky enough to get there, is probably going to be round five. So, tough to bet against Piotr Jan. Tough to pick against him anyway. But I will be placing some bets against him. This, uh, look, I use BetUS.com, as I said, and they fucked up. They fucked up a lot here. I made a few little notes. I like to bet, sprinkle something on Aljamain Sterling to win via submission in round one, plus 2500 I'm talking about throwing away $5 so you can win 125 And then Aljamain Sterling to win via unanimous decision at plus 750 You can bet $25 on that. You're going to make a few hundred bucks. He's a, a very capable fighter. I know he's going to approach this fight a lot differently, which you know may uh, cost him the success that he found early in the first fight, which he did find success in rounds one and two, specifically round one, despite being dropped, I think, and thrown around a few times. But um, if, he, if he approaches the fight differently, his output is not going to be there. The flying knee and head kick and flying knee and spinning back fuck and all that shit, he's not going to be throwing all that, trying to overwhelm Jan. And it'll leave Jan a lot more openings to just tighten that round up, if not win the round altogether. So I just think uh, it's uh, my heart's not totally into the decision, but after seeing that first fight, uh, re-watching it, I, I should say, I do see some opportunity there to place a bet on Aljo to win via unanimous decision. Now, as for the fight itself, I do think Aljo is going to be trying to, I mean, I'm very sure he's going to be trying to take uh, Jan down. I hope and I think he sharpened his wrestling. But, you know, spoiler, I'd like Aljo to win because he lives like fucking five minutes from where I'm sitting right here. So it's a little hometown hero thing going here. But um, anyway, let me get back to the Bet US where they fucked up. They fucked up by having... Uh, what'd they have? Fuck. I think uh, where they fucked up is Aljamain Sterling to win via knockout, submission, TKO, dis you know... De disqualification, all those all together is plus 800. But for him to win specifically by a dis uh, submission is plus 750. So the submission, you know, you're specifying, that's a much more narrow lane. It's just a submission. You eliminate all those other options. The odds should be much uh, lower or steeper. And lower or steeper, I don't know. Those are opposites. But you know what I'm saying. Either way, Aljo is... Uh, you know, I mean, he's a submission artist. I get the submission should be, you know, uh, you know, it should be more likely than the knockout when you're looking at Aljamain Sterling, no matter who he's fighting. But still, when you throw in the option for a knockout in there, the odds shouldn't become shittier. What the fuck is this? Got my boss calling me. Hold on. All right. And, uh, you know, Jose, um, Jose Aldo, uh, Aljamain Sterling, he's... I think he's got the best jujitsu in the division. I do think there's an opportunity for him to submit Pure to Jan in round one, but it's got to be where he hits that takedown, gets that back. Everything's working perfectly, just like it did with Corey Sanhagen. But still, the Corey Sanhagen fight was a year ago. That's one of the best fighters in the world, and that's how Aljo finished him. I think it was a little over a year ago. It must have been. The, the first fight between them, Jan and Aljo, was a year ago. So, But anyway... Uh, bet US fucked up, so I'd advise betting on Aljo, or sprinkling something on Aljo to win via submission in round one. Uh, slightly bigger bet on Aljo to win via unanimous decision, because I do think they fucked those odds up. I think everybody's, you know, uh, underestimating Aljo, perhaps overestimating Jan. And maybe even a sprinkle on Jan to win via ra uh, round five, TKO, plus 1800. I'm talking about throwing away a few dollars. But my pick for this is Jan versus of Jan via unanimous decision. So I'm fucking stupid. No, but you know what I mean. Uh, there's no money in Jan via unanimous decision, but I feel like I have a firm grasp on these two fighters, and I like the few props of Jan in round five, Aljo via unanimous decision, Aljo submission round one. All right, uh, Burns versus Chemayev. Huh. I'm going with Chemayev. I'm taking him via TKO round one. I uh, And by TKO, I do mean he's on top of him. Maybe even on uh, Gilbert Burns' back. Which would be interesting. It'd be fascinating to see. Despite all the hype with Chemayev. And um, Gilbert Burns, look. There's something to be said about him winning, and winning this fight late. He's got much more experience. 
He's a much more seasoned fighter. And he's at the scratch and claw for a lot of tough victories. And look, Chemayev, despite all the hype and whatever, we, you know, a fight is a fight. If he gets hit in the wrong spot in the body, now he's got shitty cardio. If he gets hit in the fucking head. Well, we saw with Zombie, he got hit with a big strike against Brian Ortega in round one, a spinning elbow. Everybody that saw that knew it hurt, but I didn't know it fucked him up that badly. He said he didn't remember any of the rest of the fight. So shit like this can happen, and eventually it will. I'm not saying he's going to be beaten, because I said that shit about John Jones, too. But um, Chemayev, you know, uh, he's the heavy favorite in this fight for a reason. He's twice the size of Gilbert Burns, just like Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor. He's three times my size. I don't I can't do Irish, whatever. But Chemayev is um, a grappling monster. This is a guy, he's a wrestling monster, first of all. He's going to get on top of Gilbert Burns if he so chooses. I'm not even sure he will, to be honest. I think Chemayev might even be looking for the knockout. That's why I, I picked TKO via round one. I have it in my head. He's going to be on top of Burns. But I also know he's seen Burns lose to Dan Hooker. Chemayev knows he's got heavy, heavy hands. He's knocked out some good fighters already in his short career inside the UFC as well. And... Uh, and that was over 185 pound Gerald Mearshart. So Chemayev, uh, I think he's got the power advantage. I can't say he's got the striking advantage over Gilbert Burns because Gilbert Burns become a pretty sharp striker himself. But Chemayev's a bigger man and he's going to be the more powerful man. I see him trying to, uh, crowd Gilbert Burns against the cage and knock him out. If not, rip him to the floor and do what he does to everybody else. Just see if it works on Gilbert Burns. Where he could get in trouble is going for a submission, wasting some energy trying to choke Gilbert out. Gilbert's got great jiu-jitsu, elite jiu-jitsu. And if Jemiah finds himself chasing a submission, he could find his cardio starting to fail him and he could be in for a rough round three, if not round two. So, I don't know. I uh, don't like the odds so much on Chemayev, anything really. But uh, even the submission odds, which are a little longer... But uh, I like the under in this fight. Under one and a half rounds, even money. And I just speculated about the third round and a potential late comeback for Gilbert Burns. And that's speculation. And uh, it all makes sense as a possibility. But reality is reality. I'm taking Shemaev to run through Gilbert Burns in one way or another. I'd love to see him get a submission, to be honest. But I think it's going to come with a... The last thing that Gilbert Burns is going to eat is a fucking fist. And that's how this fight is going to end. Under one and a half rounds, even money. Gilbert Burns to win in round three is plus 2,500. Throw $5 on that to hedge your under one and a half rounds, even uh, even money bet. And those are my thoughts on that one. Uh, of course, I got a lot more thoughts on that. I can't wait to see what fucking happens in this fight. This is like the people's main event, as they say. And look, Gilbert Burns, he was a title challenger last year. Since then, he's taken out Wonder Boy. If this guy, if Chemayev beats Gilbert Burns, he's fighting for a title next. He, he could, anyway. I don't know. You know, Leon Edwards can't be denied. Leon's got to fight Usman. Chemayev may have to fight someone else. But he's certainly in line for a title shot. And I wouldn't put it past the UFC to fucking bump Leon. But I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, Dern versus Torres. M Mackenzie Dern versus Tisha Torres. I don't know. I'm going with Torres via unanimous decision, but this my heart's not into it. I'm sure you guys can imagine how I see the fight playing out if I'm picking Tisha Torres to win a decision. We've seen Dern with some, you know, in some rough fights with uh, Marina Rodriguez and Amanda Re Hibosh. And I do think Tisha Torres is every bit the athlete those fighters are. And, of course, she's every bit the fighter they both are. She's uh, very capable, and her striking, she's going to have a distinct striking advantage, I think. Mackenzie Dern's got good striking, too. It's come along. She's dropped a few people in the UFC, or at least Amanda Cooper, anyway. She's got hands, but Tisha Torres is a fucking tank, and she's an animal. And she's not going anywhere, and she's looked very good. After a shitty skid... Losing to the elite of the elite of the division in, I think, four straight. She's won three straight, and she's looked very fucking good. So, Tisha Torres, 
I can almost say she's in her prime, and I'm going to be picking her to win. I'm not going to be betting on her. I'm actually going to throw something on Mackenzie Dern to win via submission round one, plus 450. I know what you're thinking. This guy's fucking stupid. He bets against every one of his picks. That's just where I see the value. And I can't resist after hitting Alexa Grasso plus 900 submission last week, two weeks ago. All right, but I'm taking Torres. Mackenzie Dern via round one submission is my hedge. Mackenzie Dern, when she wins, is usually via submission. And when she submits someone, it's usually in round one. I think maybe one of her submissions has come after round one. Torres has never been submitted, but... You know, uh, there's levels to jiu-jitsu, and she's definitely at a disadvantage there. But my pick is Torres wins a unanimous decision. Those odds, I think it's plus 125 for her to win a decision. I just don't like that, so I'm going to stay away from that. I'd almost prefer her money line at minus one, whatever the fuck. But, um, you know, it's like minus 125, maybe. She's uh, a decision fighter, obviously, Tisha Torres, a point fighter. Most fighters in this division are, but... Uh, you know, I just can't uh, put all my eggs into one basket for just a slight jump in betting value. Uh, so yeah, I like Torres. I don't really like any bets, but I would sprinkle $5 on Dern to win via submission round one. Or maybe a little more than five. Depends on how I do earlier in the night. Alright, next fight. Uh, Vince Pichel from Hell Pichel versus uh, Mark Madsen. I don't know. I'm taking Pichel to win, and I'm expecting him to lose round one. So, you know, I don't typically bet against a guy I expect to lose round one, but Pichel is from hell, and he's going to give Mark Madsen hell. Pichel's very tough to put away. We've seen Gregor Gillespie and uh, Rustam Habilov way back in the day in his first UFC fight, Pichel. Maybe Habilov's too. Uh take out Vince Pichel, but other than that, this guy is just, he's a tank, he's not going anywhere, he's a really good striker, much more diverse striker than Madsen, Madsen's limited, of course Madsen's a wrestler who got into the game late, and uh, look, these guys are both good athletes, but they're 39 and 37, Madsen being 39, it's just uh, Olympic credentials or whatever, it's tough to pick against a 40 year old, uh, going up against a more seasoned fighter. I'd be very surprised, no matter how the fight plays out, as, as sure as I am that he would win round one, which I'm not even too sure of that, I'm more sure that Pichel wins round three. If this fight gets there and I expect it to get there, Vince Pichel will be the better fighter in round three. The only way Madsen wins round three, I'd say, is lay and pray. So uh, Pichel via decision, I don't like the odds, I don't like anything there, I'm not going to bet on it. Next fight, Ian Gary versus Darian Weeks. This one's interesting. These guys are both... I mean, Gary's really the prospect here. He's a much bigger man, too. He's got like five inches on uh, Darian Weeks. Darian Weeks, I thought, had a really good showing against Brian Barbarina. He lost a decision, but he stole a round from Barbarina. Not that Barbarina's a world beater, but he's a very good fighter. And um, Darian Weeks took that fight on short, no short notice, I think. But uh, anyway, Ian Gary's the prospect. He's the man. He's uh, got mostly knockouts. I think one decision on his record. And he had that beautiful knockout in the UFC in his first fight over Jordan Williams, who was kicking his ass. Kicking his ass for like four minutes. I didn't like everything I saw with Ian Gary. You know, as I said, he got his ass kicked. I thought he kept his hands down and he just, he seemed too confident. And then at the end of the round, I was like, oh, I see why he was confident. That was beautiful. And he put uh, Jordan Williams away. But Darian Weeks has never been put away. This guy's never been finished. There was some horseshit, doctor stoppage or whatever. But I don't, you know, while I attribute that to the, the victor as a legitimate victory, I don't consider that a legitimate finish. And this is a guy who's been tested. He's got an extensive amateur career. They both have nice amateur careers, but Weeks has a more extensive amateur career in which he suffered losses, not to mention his loss against Barbarina, who I thought, hey, you take a fighter with six pro fights going up against Brian Barbarina, and if he loses the fight to Barbarina, that means Barbarina's winning. The UFC guy, Barbarina, should put him away. Over the course of 15 minutes, he should put him away. So I think that loss... Going to a decision says a lot about Darian Weeks, as do all of his losses. So my prediction here 
is Gary via KO round two. That's right. I'm going against my own fucking horseshit, talking about him being durable and whatever. I do think Darian Weiss is very durable. Um, that's why I'm not married to any bet on uh, Ian Gary winning via knockout. Certainly not knockout in round two. And uh, I don't like the odds for him winning via decision either. But my prediction will be Gary via knockout round two. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Darian Weeks went to a decision and even looked good later on in the fight. But uh, I see him having, this is a really tall order, you know, for Darian Weeks. Literally a tall order. He's got five inches of height on Darian Weeks. And Weeks is good of a striker, not that he's a good striker, but as sound of a striker as he is. He's going up against somebody who, on paper and by reputation anyway, is better. And I just think he's not going to be able to bully him around, take him down, and he's going to get hurt. Whether or not he gets finished remains to be seen, but uh, my prediction, Ian Gary via knockout round two. All right, now that brings us to the prelims, which we have seven fucking fights. Jairzinho uh, Rose, Rosenstruck. Why did I start... I, I, I decide to start using their first names once I get the Rosenstruck. Rosenstruck versus Marcin Tabora. Hmm. I went with uh, Rosenstruck via knockout round two. Just really picked a round anyway. I guess round one would be more likely. But I went with Rosenstruck via round uh, via knockout. I do think... You know, I know he's every much the striker that the guys who have knocked out Rosenstruck is. Yeah, are. Yeah, I had to go with the right verb there. He's every bit the striker that those guys are. He really is. He's just um, very slow. He's almost deceptive the way he is, the way he fights. He's slow and podding and whatever, but this guy's got, very, uh, you know, high-level kickboxing experience. And I don't want to say he's got an underrated ground game because I don't think he does. I think it's rated exactly where it should be rated. But his get-up game and his survivability and all that, you know, his MMA durability, it's there. This guy, when he came into the UFC, I thought, oh, when someone gets him down, he'll get submitted. When he's standing up, he'll get... No, no, no. That's not how it works. He's a competent fighter. And I think... I know for a fact he can survive with Tybora on top of him. I just... I don't know if he could do that for 15 minutes. But um, I think Rosenstruck eventually catches Tybora. Uh, against the cage and knocks him out. Similar to the Derek Lewis fight, only I think it'll come a lot, a lot earlier. And as for bets, I do like a little bit of a bet on Tybora to win via unanimous decision. $5. $10. Alright, I'm a degenerate. Like $17. To win via unanimous decision, plus 300 I just think uh, if Tybora wins, it's via unanimous decision because Rosenstruck is tough. He's not Mr. Ground Game, but it's not like Tybora is uh, Jacare. You know, Tybora is a very good top game fighter. He doesn't have the wrestling that Curtis Blades has. This fight won't look that way. That's absolutely sure. But uh, if he works really hard, he could follow that blueprint and get it done. Still, I'm picking Rosenstruck via knockout, but I don't like any Rosenstruck bets. I'll throw something on Tybora to win via unanimous decision. Which, if he wins, in my opinion, that's the only way he wins. He's not fighting... Uh, Fucking Greg Hardy here. All right, next fight. Aspen Ladd versus Raquel Pennington. I'm taking Pennington to win the unanimous decision. I don't like any of the bets. I'm really rooting for Aspen Ladd. I usually root for the uh, the veteran, and Pennington's been around forever. But Aspen Ladd is kind of cute. So I'm betting on I mean, I, I like Aspen Ladd, and I want her to win. I just think she's going to get roughed up. You know, um, Raquel Pennington is absolutely capable of following the blueprint that was just laid out by uh, Norma Dumont. That was an exceptionally shitty fight and ex an exceptionally shitty performance from Ladd. That was just five rounds of garbage. And that was supposed to be her redemption fight after missing weight against Macy Chasson, who ironically, Macy recovered with a nice fight against Pennington. And Pennington smoked Macy Chasson. So... The smart pick here is Pennington via unanimous decision, and the smart bet is nothing. There's nothing smart about this. I'd like to see Ladd win. I'd like to see Ladd bully uh, Pennington, get on top, and whatever, but I see a lot of this fight being uh, contested in the clinch, 
and at range. And Raquel Pennington is just too too good to bet against in that fight. All right, next one. Mickey Gall versus Mike Mallett. I like uh, I like Mickey Gall here. I do. I like Mickey Gall. I don't know how to predict the fight. So I went with the decision. But I don't know. That doesn't seem too likely. I don't have the firmest grasp on this fight because there's a lot of questions with Mike Mallett. Uh, or maybe Malat. I'm going to call him Malat. Malat is, um, I think he's the Muay Thai coach for Team Alpha Male. He's been sharpening his jujitsu a lot over the last few years. And he's in his athletic prime. But, you know, he's 30 years old. But he just, he's, there's so many questions. This guy has only fought a few times in the last five, six years. He's had a lot of layoffs. A lot of horse shit. And he's still a relatively inexperienced fighter. Mickey Gall's had his whole career in the UFC. And Mike Mallott still has fewer fights, I believe, than Mickey Gall. So, Mickey is the man here. He's got, he's got all the experience. And uh, jiu-jitsu-wise, like I said, Mallott's been sharpening his jiu-jitsu over the last few years. And this might be one of the few fights where Mickey Gall just doesn't have an answer for him. And a lot of that, you know, these jujitsu battles can be settled, at least in the context of an MMA fight, with who gets top position. It just becomes a wrestling battle. And that could be uh, the deciding factor on who wins the fight, who's got better wrestling, which it should be Mike Malott. He's a better wrestler, I think, at least on paper, than Mickey Gall. But Mickey, where I see, you know, I just, I like Mickey Gall to win this fight because I think his striking is underrated. I think his... Uh, Cardio is a little underrated after that Diego Sanchez fight. And I don't know. I think, you know, I just, I, I, I like what I know about Mickey Gall. I trust him more. I trust him in a fight. I know he's not going to fade. I don't know what Malat's going to look like in round three. I'm pretty sure I know what Mickey Gall's going to look like in round three. Mickey Gall is, uh, we've seen him in some really close fights throughout the years or just, you know, some back and forth fights. He had that one with Randy Brown way back. Even the Sage Northcutt fight was pretty close. And, uh, you know, he's in the Diego Sanchez fight. I think he won round one and then just fell apart. Although he had a lot of kidney issues and whatever the fuck he said. It's a, uh, this is a tough fight to predict and to bet on. But I'm going with Mickey Gall because he's the proven commodity. And I do think, you know, even if Mala turns out to be just a um, a really good fighter. I do think Mickey's good enough to exploit inexperience. I do think Mickey's good enough to surprise people, especially on the feet. We saw him lighting up Jordan Williams when they fought, and I I I really feel like it's possible. I I think it's you know my, while my bet is goal via decision, I think it's smart to bet to sprinkle something on goal to win via knockout. That's what I truly think. I think if you beat, if you pick him to win via knockout flat kick or TKO, which could come from the on the ground, of course, it's plus nine hundred. Again, that's just just like Alexa, Alexa Grasso winning via submission last week. I just see some value here, and Malad, of course, is one loss, even though it's to Hakim Dawadu or Dawadu, who's a you know bona fide uh, UFC not contender, but you know he's he, he's up there. And uh, I just think, uh, you know, Mickey Gall, he's not the striker that Hakeem is, mean Hakeem, but he's still underrated. And and he's a bigger man than Hakeem Dawadu. I just see there's an opportunity here. I can't say whether it'll come round one, two, or three. I guess round one, I would sprinkle something on itself. You get plus 2,000 for Mickey Gall to win via knockout in round one. I think it's plus 2,000. But... Uh, there, there's a lot of options here where I feel like I'm going to be kicking myself after this fight is over. That I should have seen that coming and whatever. So I'm trying to get ahead of that and I'm going to sprinkle something on Mickey Gall to win via knockout round one and knockout slash TKO in general. He's uh, always improving. He's still young himself, 29 years old, despite the mileage, which, you know, it seems like it's so much mileage. That's because we've seen every mile. He's fought every single fight in the UFC aside from... One or two fucking bums. I think his second fight was on the uh, Dana White's looking for a fight against Mike Jackson, who I think is fighting soon. 
in the UFC, whatever. But um, yeah, so that's my prediction. I'm taking Gall via unanimous decision. I'm gonna bet on Mickey Gall uh, money line, of course, plus 160. I'm gonna place a decent bet on that because I just think there are so many options options for Mickey Gall to win this fight. And I may turn out to be wrong on every front because that's how Mike Malott is. He might be the better striker. He might be the better grappler. He might be the better fucking wrestler, which I think he is the better wrestler. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out Saturday night. I really have no clue what to think about this. I just think for a guy with no clue who sees the odds and Mickey Gall is plus 160 and all of his props are that much more steeper and longer, I'm going to pounce on it. I like Mickey Gall to win. That's my prediction. All right. Alexei Olenek versus uh, Jared Vandera. I'm going with Olenek via submission. I just think Jared Van Der Rohe is too slow and too, uh, you know, weak. Not that he's weak, but he's not uh, the force that he's not going to, he's not a lock to knock Olenek out. Even if you tell me Van Der Rohe wins the fight, I'd still be like, I guess he wins via knockout, but I'm not even sure. Because Jared Van Der Rohe, he's not the heaviest power puncher. He may not even be a power puncher, period. And, uh... He's, you know, he's still a, uh, he's a sloppy fighter. I'm thinking Olenek gets him down and then submits him in round one. That's my prediction anyway. Th this fight is even money, by the way, the money line odds. So I'm my, I'm not going to bet on this. I'm not going to bet on I didn't like any of the betting props. I just think Olenek is good enough to fill that hole. I say that every fucking video. Uh, Van Der has been submitted twice. Once against a pretty good fighter on the regional circuit, it was like he had a great record, 12-3 and three or something. I didn't see that fight. And then to uh, Hanan Fajeda, who's kicking ass in PFL and just knocked out Fabricio Verdum a year ago. I, and then I think he tested positive for fucking horse urine or whatever the fuck. I don't know. But either way, uh, Van Der has been submitted. And Olenek is an exceptional submis submission machine. And he's unique. Ezekiel chokes and scarf holds and whatever the fuck else he's got up his sleeve. He's going to bring that to the table. And Vandera, although I'm sure he's been training for the specialist, there's no way he's comfortable enough to handle Olenek, you know, on top of him, smothering him like that. So I'm going with Olenek. It wouldn't surprise me, of course, if Vandera won. That's why I'm not betting on Olenek at, you know, almost even odds. Uh... But if Van Der Rohe wins, just, you know, sometimes you look at the losses and say, oh, when Olenek loses, it's in the first 10 seconds he gets knocked out, aside from when he fought Derek Lewis. So that's how Van Der Rohe should win. But I'm not even sure about that. Van Der Rohe doesn't seem like he's going to have that athletic prowess where he's going to even be able to get off on uh, Olenek. It might be where I think his most likely path to victory is beating the 44-year-old who's tired in the second or third round. Or he's just tired and he's fucking done and he's fatigued. That's what I really see. It's just, you know, the path to victory is the 29-year-old versus the 44-year-old. This isn't Walt Harris who's going to come in and kick your head off in 13 seconds. So I'm not going to uh, bet on anything. My prediction, Olenek via submission. And I really hope to see it. And submission via round one. In round one. All right, next fight. Anthony Hernandez versus uh, Josh Fremd. Fremd making his UFC debut. This guy's, uh, I think he was the LFA champion before he was knocked out by Gregory Robocop Rodriguez, who's in this in the UFC now, and who hits like a fucking tank. So, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, he's got a shitty chin because uh, he was hit by somebody very fucking hard. Still, he's taking this fight on short notice, filling in for Drake uh, Duplessis. I don't even remember what happened. I know he was original. Uh, I think he was booked to fight Hernandez first. I forget at this point. But anyway, uh, I'm picking Hernandez to win. My prediction is Hernandez via submission round two, and I'm not going to bet on this fight. I'm thinking Hernandez has a few options to win. Friend is really his only option, I'd say, especially coming in on short notice, is a knockout, and specifically a body shot knockout, because that's Hernandez's weakness. Frem should have a lot of size on him, good three or four inches, I think four inches, just like uh, Ian Gary versus uh, Darian Weeks. And Josh Frem has to make that work for him, but 
he has to know, you know, well, Anthony Hernandez has been knocked out early too. Go get the Kevin Holland fight. But uh, he has to know that he doesn't want to be there in round two with this guy on the ground. He just doesn't. I think Anthony Hernandez is the better fighter despite his weaknesses. I think he's a better fighter here. But even more so, I'm very sure that he's in a better position. He's the more comfortable, more seasoned UFC fighter, and he's been training his ass off. Joshua Fremd, I'm not sure when he started training for this, but uh, I think he's pouring all of his eggs into that first round knockout basket. So that, that's never a winning strategy. I'm going with Hernandez. I'd like to see it come be a submission, and uh, I'm predicting round two. All right, Pierre Rodriguez versus Kay Hansen. This one's fucking interesting. I don't know. I'm going with Kay Hansen, but that's mainly because I like blondes. So that's where I'm at. I'm going with Kay Hansen. I can't say if it'll come via, via submission or decision or TKO, I guess. But uh, my prediction is submission round two. I just threw that in there, I think, because I was bored. But uh, my heart's not into that because Pierre Rodriguez seems to be a very good fighter. She's got a much better record, of course. And, you know, whatever it is, 6-1, and 7-1 versus Kay Hansen being 7-5, and five, I think, at this point. But Kay Hansen's fought much steeper competition. And that one loss she had to Corey McKenna was a uh, a bad decision. And this is coming from somebody who bet on Corey McKenna and was screaming with fucking joy when that bet hit. I think she was a plus 200. But I knew as soon as that bell rang that uh, Kay Hansen got the better of her. And then Kay Hansen fought Jasmine Jazdovicius. I think that's her name. And that was a bigger woman. That was when Kay moved up to straw fucking flyweight. Now she's moving back down to straw weight to fight someone her size. So I just think, um, and not that the, the, they got the odds wrong, because I think they got the odds right. This is a dead even matchup. I think they're dead even. Piera, she's got no UFC experience. She won that a nice fight on the Contender Series, and she looked like a... Um, you know, a very good fighter, comfortable fighter, point fighter on her feet. And she, she went for the kill a few times, but didn't get it. But uh, Kay Hansen is fighting someone her size now. She's someone who's got good takedown. She's got deceptively good wrestling, which you're not going to see, even though we did see a little bit against Jazz Davicius, who's a much bigger woman. You're, you're going to see it Saturday night against Pierre Rodriguez. I'd almost guarantee it. You know, I can't see a fight. I mean, of course, Piera could win just by dancing around her for 15 minutes, but I don't see that happening. I see Kay being uh, able to get takedowns more easily in this fight, and I think she will, and I'm predicting that'll get her the victory. I don't know if it'll come via submission or decision, but I'm going with Blondie. So that's my prediction. Julio Arce versus, uh, fuck, Daniel Santos. That's the first fight of the night, the last fight I'm covering. I got Arce winning via, via decision. This guy is just, uh, you know, he's been around for a long time now. We've seen him kick some serious ass and get his ass kicked, like Song Yudong. But we've seen him knock out uh, Andre Yule and uh, fucking outpoint Dan Ige, I think, in his first UFC fight, which that win's only gotten a lot better with age. So I like Julio Arce to win just based on his experience and being the UFC fighter. But this guy, Santos, is a killer. He's got some really nice, flashy finishes. Multiple. He's, I think he's like 7-1 or 7-0, and oh maybe. He's got multiple finishes via spinning attacks in just seven victories. So, this guy's going to bring the excitement. I kind of root for guys like that, you know, typically, that bring the excitement and win via spinning back, fucking elbow, whatever the fuck. But uh, Julio Arce is a New York guy. He fights at a Tiger Shulman here. So I'm going with Julio Arce. I'm taking him to win via unanimous decision. However, my bet, I will and have sprinkled something on Daniel Santos to win via knockout or, or finish altogether at plus 450. I got it at. So that's pretty much it. Those are my predictions. And now let me give you my bets. I'll recap them at the end here. Uh, I got Koreans. I'm betting, sprinkling something on Zombie to win via knockout. Plus 900. I'm going to sprinkle some shit on uh, 
the Aljo Yan fight. Aljo to win via unanimous decision plus 750. Aljo to win submission round one plus 2500. Just five dollars on that. And Pure to Yan to win round five uh, plus 1800. That's about all I could see in this that, that's valuable. And my heart's not in any one of those because my prediction is Yan to win via unanimous decision. But we'll see how it works. Uh, I like Chimaev uh, Chimay Burns. I'm betting heavily. This is one of my heavy bets on the under. Under one and a half rounds, even money. I think uh, Chimaev's going to be too big, too strong, and he's going to run through Gilbert Burns. And I might sprinkle something on Gilbert Burns to win via round, uh, via round three, plus 2,500. Next up, I will... Sprinkle something on submission round one for Mackenzie Dern, but I'm not really betting on that fight. And I will I will be betting on Tybora. I'll put a little sprinkle on Tybora to win via unanimous decision, plus 300. And Mickey Gall is my other bet. I'm going to bet on Mickey Gall, the money line, a decent sized bet, plus 160. And Mickey Gall to win via knockout, just a little bit of a sprinkle there, plus 900. So really, my bets are Chamayev Burns under one and a half rounds and Mickey Gall to win. And then after that, it's all props and horse shit and whatever, which I like to dismiss myself. But again, Alexa Grasso submission plus 900. So how can I resist being this prop master ass wipe? All right, that about wraps it up for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Smash that like button. I'm a douchebag. All right.